Welcome everyone, I'm Dean Long Pham and we are here today for a very special global week to act for SDGs, Turning Point Dialogue Series. We are turning it around today for meaningful youth engagement in climate action and today we have a very, very inspirational guest who will share her amazing and inspirational insight into why and how we must fight for change and turn it around for use everywhere around the globe for climate action. So please give a virtual round of applause to Shansuhas Kumar, who is a former Miss Earth India 2017 and current program manager at WIDU. And she has been mobilizing youth at grassroots, local and national level in India to take action for the climate. So welcome, Shan, and hello. Thank you, Dan Long. It's great to be here. Yes, so great to have you with us today. And yes, let's get it started. Uh, so the first part of this dialogue, I would love to learn more about, uh, you know, from your experience, from your observation, uh, you know, working with youth in India. So could you share with us what is the current reality when it comes to meaningful youth engagement in climate action? And, you know, if you could elaborate on what are the challenges, what are the opportunities as well? Yes, absolutely. I think at this point, the current involvement is quite mixed. I feel like um, in the urban area, especially uh, bigger cities, youth have more exposure to climate issues. And they are also vocal in uh, just voicing the challenges and working or even talking to decision makers or reaching out to decision makers in many different places. Many youth are also considering careers and, you know, having green jobs or even in political office or in government because this has become one of the biggest challenges of today. However, I feel like um, at this point, there are so many regions of the country that are still very far away from, um, and in this case, I'm talking about where I am from India, but also I think I'll extend it to the region itself. Um, there are not a lot of opportunities for them to learn about climate action and what they can do, but there are also a lot of like daily challenges that they face that become first priority, which is why uh, there isn't a lot of conversation in different regions where there isn't a lot of exposure to these issues. Um, I do think we are in a time though where um, the access to this knowledge is easier thanks to the internet. Um, and I think there are people now who have heard that, you know, climate is becoming a big issue. We've already seen like in the news, how many disasters there have been all over the world. So I know that people are mildly aware, but I don't think that everybody's engaging too much with this issue. One of the biggest challenges is definitely like in many places, youth are not involved in the decision making processes and our challenges outside of just the climate sphere are not taken into account. Um, so that's one challenge we face. But I think the others also that yes we're aware but then what do we do right like we always ask ourselves that question that okay this there's this cri climate crisis there are all of these things happening all across the world but if it's not in front of me every single day um which is i think the nature of just climate change we've been talking about it for 30 years now um then we always think, okay, fine, this is not my immediate challenge. So maybe this can wait. And so it just goes away from our mind. So I think just keeping ourselves motivated in this time. And also because um, in this day and age where like anxiety is increasing, like there's this sense of eco anxiety as well at this point that, you know, we don't know what's happening 20 years down the line in some cases. So um, there are two scenarios here. One where People are aware, but they just don't know what to do. And the other way, other where people may be uh, quite aware, uh, and they must also be feeling like the anxiety around like how rapidly things are changing. So I would say like those are two major challenges apart from just not having a space or or you know seat at the table to be able to involve ourselves into those conversations in a meaningful way, not just in a tokenistic way. Thank you so much, and I really love your answer. I think I see your answer as a journey. You know, when maybe you are aspiring climate leader, you are sort of aware of issue or maybe not so much, but you don't know where to start. And once you already take action, maybe it has, you could have echo anxiety, but maybe you could also not be heard, not have your voice heard from policymakers. So you don't really know how to, you know, overcome this bottleneck. So I really, really love your answer. And, you know, considering all these challenges, 
Now, if we take more on the positive side, what will be your vision? You know, what if I tell you meaningful youth engagement for climate action? How does it look like? And what do you think must be done today to reach this, to reach your vision? I actually love that question. And I think I'm just going to continue in the way that you summarized my last answer, that it's a journey. And I feel like with so many people that I talk about the environment, they say, oh, you know, like, I, I'm not sure if I have the time to volunteer with on my job to, you know, do something for the environment or plant a tree or something like that. And I, my first reaction to that is, you know, everything that we do, and every single day draws from the resources of the planet. So this isn't, as much as it's great to plant a tree, um, as much as it's great to volunteer for the environment, this is a daily thing. This is a part of our lives. And every decision that we make in the way that we consume, in the way that you know we dress ourselves or what we eat or what lifestyle choices we make, all of those affect the environment, increase our carbon footprint. So I think my answer is that today, I think youth have... Um, it's it's not a generation where you have only four options of being what you want to be um, that are conventional and, you know, that's where people find success, which was the case like a few decades ago. Now youth can do whatever they want to. If they don't find a job that they like, they could literally create one. And it's, uh, you know, there are support structures for that that are coming up in every single country, which is fantastic. Um, so I think my vision for this is that, in some time, every single person treats this as we treat, I don't know, you know, how we learn about money, how we learn about cooking, these life skills. I hope that it becomes such an integral part of us that we're thinking about these actions that we're taking on a day to day basis, just as we learn about any other life skill. We also learn to be conscious of the actions we're taking. Um, I know, like in this Instagram generation, many of us um, and, and especially in the last 10 years, there's been so much focus on just like, you know, buying new clothes um, and taking a picture with it every single time. But I would say that we need to, as young people, flip the narrative and like you say, turn it around and say, you know, what's actually fashionable is to upcycle, is to, um, you know, borrow, do secondhand um, or support you know, small businesses support sustainable local businesses that produce um, the clothing that you're wearing, right? Um, or um, also just utilizing community, like just finding out who you can learn more from or get something stitched by someone who's around you. So I think that's just a very small example of, you know, how you can flip something around and, you know, make that decision your own as young people. If we start having these conversations and these narratives keep changing, I think um, my vision at the end of the day would be that every single person is using this knowledge that they've gained around climate action and how to reduce their carbon footprint in their personal lives, but also the roles that they play at work. So you don't have to specifically come and become like a climate activist, or you don't have to specifically start working in the green energy space to contribute to the climate. If you're a lawyer, if you're an architect, if you're a business person, if you're a filmmaker, you can still just learn about climate and create a film, create a green building, um, you know, come up with an innovation. And so I think the possibilities are endless, no matter what role you're playing, just make it a part of your life. And um, I think eventually the big plan would be that all sectors, all people, all organizations make this a priority and are working towards creating spaces that um, cater to the need of the planet at this point. Again, I, I think I, I totally agree with you that climate change is part of our life um, and we might not realize it so much. And what you said, I mean, it's very powerful because you don't ask people to, okay, be a climate activist 100% day and night, 24-7. You are more like, okay, in whatever you do, how can you integrate climate action, if you are gender activist, if you are architect, if you are whatever, how can you include um, climate action, climate awareness in whatever you do? I think it's so powerful. And maybe to continue elaborate on this, um, you know, what would you say or encourage people who are watching us to do what is, you know, your call to action? And I think coming back to the first question as well, because we mentioned both use, but also, you know, the, the other stakeholders, like maybe policymakers, uh, also have a big role to play in meaningful youth engagement in climate action. So maybe what would be your call to action for the youth and your call to action for 
you know, world climate leaders? Um, that's, that's a really interesting question. I think my first call to action is that in whichever country you're in, educate yourself, um, and especially also at a, at a national level, like what are your country's nationally determined contributions towards, you know, reaching, like, I mean, catering to the Paris Agreement. Also learn about in your province or your district, um, in your state, what is the state action plan of like climate? And in your role, is there any way that you can, again, integrate yourself into that system to be able to contribute? Um, and if not, then what can you be doing to mobilize your own community? And even if you don't think that mobilizing the community is something that you can do in your current role, start with your family. Um, to be honest, like, it, they are, it is the hardest thing to change opinions of the people closest to you. Um, and if it is not a priority in, my, in your family to talk about climate issues um, or just generally sustainability and environment is not a part of the you know, lifestyle choices of your family, start having those conversations. Because um, I feel like when more and more people become very conscious of what's happening to the planet and how it's going to affect everybody around us as well as us in the long run and... Um, how this is going to be so detrimental for, you know, anything that we've done, any progress that we've made, even with COVID right now, we saw that it was so terrible for, you know, gender equity and equality. And, you know, we have, we progressed and then we went back by many, many years in terms of gender equality. So when there are disasters or when there is, when there are um, issues that come up, which will because of climate change, the way that we have seen in the last year, there are going to be things that we've made progress on that are just going to be washed away, right? So climate change is not, it's not just um, an environmental issue. Um, it is a geographical stability issue. It's a medical issue. It's a fine economic issue. Um, it is a life, I mean, I, I talked about livelihood, but like food security, water security issue, it's just so many things. So if these things, like imagine suddenly you don't have water, you don't have food, this will become the first problem. We will not be able to think about what jobs, you know, we need or how we're going to earn money, getting food on the table, getting water, making sure that we have a house, that there's infrastructural stability will become a problem if we don't pay attention to the changes in our planet at this point. So I think definitely my call to action is learn, um, educate yourself. Um, and if you cannot step out or, you know, work with your government or um, even like your local community, just sensitize your family so that, you know, when every family gets really makes this a priority. I mean, imagine in a country like India, where it's a democracy, if everyone's first challenge issue that they cared about was um, climate change, would the government not get behind that, right? Um, if it is the main problem that in public sentiment, if that is the major problem that everybody wants to solve, the government will absolutely like take note of that and also start uh, making changes. So I think on both sides, I would say, like, obviously, from, from the leader side of things, yes, um, there are already a lot of things on paper, we need to implement them. And then on the other side, I would say, if, like, keep educating yourself, these things are changing rapidly. So every, every few weeks, like there's something new to learn, uh, whether it's about biodiversity, pollution, climate, everything that, you know, kind of ties together for climate. Um, Keep doing that. Keep getting to know like what policies are around you, what people are working on and how you can integrate yourself. Just going back to my last answer. Thank you so much, Anna. I think, again, I mean, it's really linked to what we're saying about the climate journey, right? Because both your answers are very linked together in a sense. If you educate yourself more, if you know more about climate, if you take more climate action, you will be willing to make your government accountable at the point where they cannot ignore whatever the population says. And I really love how your answers, I mean, they really link together. Um, and, and yeah, I think very, very concrete call to action. Uh, so thank you so much. And maybe again on that, um, you're such an inspiring uh, personality. I know it personally. Um, but if we switch, if, if we turn this question around, uh, what also inspires you, you know, to continue taking action? You were speaking about eco anxiety earlier on. So, you know, what gives you energy? What inspires you? Could you share, I don't know, people, resources, video, movies, music, anything that you would like to share with the community? 
Absolutely. That's such a great question. Um, I love that question so much. Um, I think for me, I, I would always turn to movies and documentaries. And I think, um, I mean, to quote, quote one that had a huge impact on me when I was much younger was The Inconvenient Truth, um, which was presented by uh, Mr. Al Gore, who is a Nobel laureate as well. And, you know, all of that research and, I, you know, working together with the IPCC it was quite, to think that this was made that long ago, um, and now, you know, now in public sentiment, like everybody's talking about climate action because they're seeing the effects. But this was actually done when um, it was quite controversial to even say that, you know, climate change is coming. So it just really gave me the power and, you know, the inspiration to say that, you know, even if like everybody doesn't believe you, if, if you know your research is right, if you have the right information and if you have the courage, then you can change things around you. So that was very powerful for me back in the day. But I would say I genuinely enjoy watching documentaries, not just about climate action, but just about the planet in general, how incredible ecosystems are and how they sustain themselves. And we have so much to learn from them. Um, honestly, if you go to Netflix and, you know, you watch Life in Color or you watch, you know, the life of, you know, there's, there's another documentary on uh, fungi and you just think about how, how, in, like, how mysterious and intricate the planet is um, and how like with all of these climate disasters that are happening, many of these regions are getting destroyed and we may not ever get back, get them back again. So I think that's one inspiration for sure. Um, I also follow like different people um, uh, on Instagram, on Facebook, um, on LinkedIn who keep inspiring me, uh, whether it is, you know, um, zero waste chefs or broadcasters who speak about climate I think every person can find their own I think Instagram is just such a space like if you're if you keep looking for sustainability it will all, all already show you options in that way so I, I look at that I don't necessarily have a, a, a song or a book in mind at this point uh, but I think definitely like I'm a very visual person and like just walking to watching documentaries really connect me to it. In terms of community, uh, I'm a part of the Climate Reality Leadership Core. And I think I'm a part of that group, which keeps buzzing all the time with like different people doing different things across the country. I'm also a part of like different communities in the Asia Pacific, uh, where there are incredible climate advocates, um, actually not just Asia Pacific, even around the world, who keep posting about what they're doing. Um, and that also gives me hope that, you know, the days I'm feeling down there is somebody out there like still hustling and making these things happen. So, um, so which is why like I, I keep getting motivated with all these stories around me and, you know, even being connected with you and being reminded, okay, we need to work on this. So yeah, I would say that. Thank you so much, Shan. Yes, encouraging everyone to follow the Zero Waste Chef, uh, look at all the documentaries you mentioned and be connected to networks because that's the best way to get inspired, maybe overcome it going shady, we have it. And yeah, just to wrap up, I think maybe one key takeaway I take is really the intersectionality of climate, how it's linked to everything. If we speak with the SDG framework, it's linked to every SDGs. Uh, so find which SDG are you passionate about and what can you do as well uh, for the climate in the SDGs that you are advocating for. So uh, thank you so much, Shan. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for this important conversation as we are mobilizing youth across the globe as part of the Global Week to act for SDGs, to turn it around for people and planet together. So to change everything, it will take everyone. So join us at www.actforsdgs.org. Thank you so much, everyone, and take some climate actions. <laughs>